Hi guys, uh, this video focuses on day's work uh, which is part of uh, practical navigation of ships and I have previously made a video on this topic and I will give you a link with this video as well but I was asked by a few of my subscribers to make one in which there is a continuous effect of uh, wind and leeway and uh, they wanted to uh, watch a video about that so uh, uh, here it is uh, another example of day's work but this time with a continuous wind and leeway acting on the ship's course uh, and hopefully this should clear things up for you alright so if you have any questions please write to me in comments uh, so I'll go into get into the question straight away the question says that it's uh, 6th of March uh, and for example and uh, a ship is in a position 46 36 south and 175 34 minutes east and uh, following are the courses that was steamed by the ship so you can see that uh, the time is given all right here and then the compass course is given here the deviation is given the leeway is given how much was the leeway uh, the direction of the wind is given and finally the speed that which the vessel was doing is given as well so this is not the speed of the wind this is the speed of the ship or the vessel all right so from 1200 to 1600 it steered a course of 150 degrees compass uh, for 5 degree was a deviation and east was a deviation 3 degree of leeway southwest by west was the wind and the speed of the vessel was 8 knots all right and then 1600 to 2000 it was 140 uh, compass course 4 degrees east was a deviation 5 degrees of leeway wind was southwesterly and then speed of the ship was 8 knots so you can see that uh, uh, the different times in the courses and deviation information all that was given all right then the variation of 10 degrees east was observed throughout uh, what we have to find out is the dr position at noon that means from one noon to the next noon so the dr position at the next day noon on the 7th of march so right now we are 6th of march noon we have to find the dr position after 24 hours and if the if the observed position was then 48 14.3 and 178 6.5 east we have to find the set and drift of current so after 12 o'clock what we are going to calculate is the uh, so the dr position or known that is the estimated position based on the course and the speed and the leeway and all that but then uh, let's uh, assume that uh, on 7th noon the observed position is given to us and by, when we say observed position this means it's more accurate or rather you can say that it is based on uh, celestial observations it's based on uh, celestial observations this and not on uh, estimated course and speed all right so if this was the uh, observed position at noon and uh, and the dr position on the 7th march is different so we can then find out the set and drift uh, all right so let's get into the solution and hopefully uh, it should be clearer to you all right so the first thing that we have to notice that uh, there is no alteration of course at 2400 hours uh, on only the speed has altered all right so you can see that from 20 to 2400 and from 2400 to 4 o'clock the course has been 120 all right in both the cases it has been 120 uh, but the speed has changed uh, from 20 to 2400 it was 7.5 knots and from 2400 to 4 o'clock in the morning it was 6.5 knots all right so we don't have to worry about the course here we just have to find out how much was the distance traveled during 2000 to 4 o'clock because from 2000 to 4 o'clock the vessel was only on one course of 120 degrees but how much was the distance traveled so from uh, 2000 to 2400 distance traveled was 7.5 knots which was the speed of the ship multiplied by 4 hours this 4 hours refers to 2000 to 2400 and so the distance traveled is 30 nautical miles from 2400 to 4 o'clock in the morning the distance as you can see is 6.5 knots which was the speed of the vessel uh, between 24 to 4 and uh, multiply by 4 this 4 is nothing but 2400 to 0400 0. and this is 26 nautical miles so therefore the total distance traveled from 2000 hours to 4 o'clock in the morning is 30 plus 26 which is 56 nautical miles on a course of 1 to 0 degrees all right so when we are summarizing the information given to us in the question this is something that we have to remember all right, I'll show you what I mean as I go down here. So you can see I have summarized the information given to me uh, in this table here from the question. That's what you guys have to do as well. All right. So for example, from 1200 to 1600, this is the first case here. 
the compass course given to us was 150 degree compass uh, the deviation was 5 degree east uh, and that's why magnetic course is 155 degree magnetic why because deviation is uh, compass is least so remember this is the rule if deviation is east compass will be least compared to the magnetic course compass least compared to magnetic all right this is the rule i used so that's why uh, you will add to get magnetic then variation is 10 degrees east variation east magnetic is least so again you will add 10 degrees so magnetic is least compared to true course so if variation is east uh, magnetic is least and this is compared to the true course so in in both the cases if say for example deviation was west compass would be best that means compass would be better than magnetic and the second case if variation was west magnetic would be best that means magnetic would be um, uh, larger than the true that's the rule of thumb we normally use i'm sure you guys know about this but i thought i'll just repeat it for those of you who don't know all right so if variation is 10 degrees east i will add 10 degrees because true course has to be more than very uh, the magnetic course now i've got true course as 165 degrees true and the leeway is three degrees but it is southwest by west all right so if i have to and then my effective course becomes 162 that's because so imagine your ship to be going 165 will be going somewhere like this right this is 165 so if this is south and this is east and this is west this is 180 so 165 will be here so if the wind is coming from southwest by west you are being pushed in this direction you are the wind is coming from here right this is southwest by west this is given to us in the question the wind is southwest by west by three degrees so when it pushes you like this your ship will actually do a course of 162 when it is being pushed from southwesterly when the wind is coming from southwesterly and that's why your effective course is 162 degrees true in this case it's pushed by three degrees right uh, and 162 degrees is also equal to south 18 degrees east so uh, 162 degrees means and I'm, I, this is just for exaggeration 162 should be closer to 180 but when you know what i mean so if i doing 162 degrees that means i have gone 18 degrees from south towards east this is 090 and this is 180 so 162 means it's south 18 degrees east that means i have gone 18 degrees from south towards east which equals to 160 and that's why effective course is when i say it's 160 when i say 162 that 162 degrees 2 is also equal to south 18 degrees east and the distance as we know is 32 nautical miles how do we know that because uh, we were traveling at eight knots for four hours so if you see here this is eight knots multiplied by four hours speed by time traveled gives you the distance all right so similarly from 1600 to 2000 i use the same rules uh, deviation east my compass would be least so i will add i get 144 again variation east so magnetic least i will again add uh, then 5 degree of leeway coming in from the same direction so if i was doing 154 i was pushed 5 degrees towards the east because the wind was coming in from the westerly fashion and that's why my effective course is 149 degrees to which is also equal to south 31 degrees east and again this is 32 nautical miles is distance travel because it's 8 knots multiplied by 4 hours you can see the information given to you in the question is 8 8 8 knots is the speed of the vessel then 2000 to 4 o'clock uh, like we calculated before distance is of course 56 nautical miles the course was only one course 120 degrees and deviation was 3 degrees east so of course i will add again to get my magnetic course and then variation is 10 degrees east i will add again to get my true course in this case there was no leeway so my true course is also my effective course all right there was no leeway in the last three cases so you get an effective course of 133 degrees two, which is south 47 degrees east just like i've shown you before the total distance i have shown you how i got 56 nautical miles and four o'clock to eight o'clock is 100 degree compass division is one degree east i will add it variation was 10 degrees east i will add again i get my true course uh, my, there was no leeway so effective course is same 112 degrees 111 degrees true also equals south 69 degrees east and the distance is 32 nautical miles because again if you look above my speed was eight knots in the last 12 hours or so and so that's why this is uh, 8 by 4 and again here this is 8 by 4 so i don't have to explain this to you guys again and again finally from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock my compass course was 095 
there was no deviation so my magnetic course remained the same there was a 10 degree east towards variation so i have added 10 degrees i get 105 degrees to there was no leeway so my effective course is the same and of course 105 degrees to also equals to south 75 degrees east all right so i hope you understood this so I, I explained you with one example and i hope that uh, you understood uh, with the other examples as well if you didn't then you can please write comments to me if i keep explaining uh, all the examples in detail then video becomes very long and boring for you guys all right so i'll just delete it all that so that there's less clutter on the screen and now i will have summarized whatever i've got from above so here what i have done is here the effective course i've written here and the distance i have put here right and you have to write it in the two figure notation of the quadrants so you have to give the quadrants so that you can find out the delight and the departure and then name the delight and departure so the first case of south 18 degrees east in 32 nautical miles i will use this uh, in the formula delight equals distance by course course so distance becomes 32 multiplied by cos of 18 degrees will give me 30.4 and this is named south because i am on a southeasterly course all right similarly so that's why i got 30.4 south here then similarly i'll find out the departure by multiplying 32 times sine of 18 which will give me 9.9 .9, and i have named it east because i'm on a southeasterly course so that's why i've written 9.9 .9 here in the second example the course becomes 31 degrees distance is 32 nautical miles so what will i do is that i will multiply 32 nautical miles multiplied by cos of 31 degrees i get 27.4 and i name is south again because again i'm on a southeasterly course and that's why i've got 27.4 here all right similarly in the second example i'll get 32 nautical miles multiplied by sine of 31 degrees and i get 16.5 i name it east again because i'm on a southeasterly course so i've got 16.5 so using the two formulas and using the different courses and using the different distances i will calculate my delat and departure all right and of course they are all southeast in this case because all the courses are southeast if there was a northeast course then a couple of them would have been north or east like in my previous video that i showed you there was a mix of north and east and west and south all right but don't in this case all the courses were southeasterly that's a coincidence uh, so you get all the delat in the south column and all the departure in the east column so once you get all the delight you add up all the delight in the south column and you get your resultant delight this is your resultant delight and you add up all the departure in the east column and you get your resultant departure east if there was some in the north you would have added the north ones up and then subtracted from the south one to get your resultant delight and similarly if there was uh, some departure in the west column you would have added up the west column separately and then subtracted from the east column and got your resultant departure from there as well all right now i will use the uh, delat and departure here all right i will use my delat and departure here so my delat of 115.8 also equals to uh, 1 degree 55.8 minutes that's because uh, 115.8 is my delat i will divide it by 60 i will get 0 1 degrees 55.8 minutes and it's south because my resultant delat was south so that's where i get my this is my delight here that's the delight i've used all right so this is the known position on the 6th of march the one given to me in the question latitude and longitude then i applied my delight once i applied my delight i know that from south i am going further south because i am going on a southeasterly coast so my south latitude should be increasing so i will add and i get my known dr lat 7th 7th of march latitude by adding the delat so i've got two latitudes once i get my known position sixth lat and known position dr seventh lat i will find out the m lat between the two positions so i will add the two because they are both in the same hemisphere they are both in the south hemisphere just add these two latitudes from here and this one goes here add the two latitudes divide by two and you will get your m lat or your mean latitude of course it's south because both positions are south once you get your mlet just find out the d long by dividing the departure by cos of mlet the departure as you know from above you calculated 1 to 8.2 this is the resultant departure that you calculated above resultant departure and you divided by cos of the mean let or mlet 
you will get your D long. Of course, it's east because your departure was east and you are on a southeasterly course. So this 190 minutes is also equal to, if you divide by 60, is also equal to 3 degrees 10 minutes. Alright, so you convert this into 3 degrees and 10 minutes and put it here. Apply to your D long and you will get your known position on the 7th of March longitude as well. So you've got this position now. So at known position, based on your DR lat and long of 6th, you estimated the course and speed, use the day's work and you calculated the known DR position for 7th of March. Now to find the set and drift, you will take this position and put it here and then compare it to the fixed position on the known that was given to you in the question. So your known fixed position, remember I told you it was based on observations of celestial bodies maybe this here, this position here was given to you. So this is based on the observation of celestial bodies, not on the DR. What you have calculated is the estimated course and speed. So once uh, you calculate your known DR position, you compare it to the observed position or the fixed position on the 7th of lat. The difference between these two will give you your set and drift. So if you have got two latitudes, just calculate the D lat, right, which you get as north because from north, uh, because one is south and the other one is uh, further north of it, 31.8 hmm? and 14.3. And then you've got two longitudes, you calculate your D long. So the fixed position is on the west, northwest side of the DR position that you have calculated. So the fixed position that is given to you is on the northwest side of your own calculated position. You have got two latitudes, you can also calculate the mean lat. Just add the two latitudes and divide by two. So you add 48 degrees 31.8 minutes plus 48 degrees 14.3 minutes and you divide by 2 you get your mean lat departure is calculated by d long multiplied by cos of mean lat d long you know 37.5 cos of mean lat you know just multiply the two and then get your departure departure is west because d long is west to find the set treat it like a course right similar to course so the formula will be tan of course equals departure by d lat instead of course you substitute it by set so if this this could have been course as well in plane sailing but because we are talking about set and drift and here we don't know the true true course we talk about it in terms of set so it would just replace course with set so tan of course would have been departure by d lat but i have written it as tan of set is equal to departure by d lat departure you know d lat you know as well divide the two take the tan onto the other side becomes tan inverse you get 54.9 which i rounded off to 55 degrees and then you give it a direction of northwest where is this northwest coming from it's coming from d lat and d long which d lat and d long this d lat and d long that's your set all right now drift treat drift as same as distance so sine of distance would have been equal to departure by sorry sine of course would have been equal to departure by distance so instead of course i have put set here i have replaced it with set and instead of distance i have replaced it with drift these are all plain sailing formulas all right so no matter if they say course and distance or set and drift you use the same formulas as you use in plain sailing and then drift is unknown so you take it on one side departure divided by sine of the set or sine of the course which is 55 degrees from here it comes 55 degrees will give you the drift all right so you have calculated the set and the drift and you've also calculated the known position on 7th of march by using the day's work all right so hope this was uh, simple enough for you to understand and uh, if you have any questions please write to me in the comments and thank you all for watching and for subscribing and for sending me feedback um, i'll uh, see you guys soon with another video of mine uh, uh, all the best